dear all we'll continue with some more problems so if you recall uh, in the last class so we started with finding the length of this uh, gvf gvf gradually variable flow uh, surface profile then in the next problem so we were asked to find what is the length of the surface profile from this obstruction to a given depth between the normal depth and the afflux this is what we saw in the earlier problem now in this problem okay it is just the reverse of what we solved in the earlier problem so in this case so our aim is to find what is the depth of flow what is the depth of flow at a distance of 150 meters from this afflux again i repeat in the earlier case we know what is the depth of flow here the pink line what i i am showing right now here i know the depth of flow from this depth of flow to this afflux our aim was to find the length of this backwater curve now in this case i know the position of the afflux and from the afflux so about a distance of 150 so what is the depth of flow that is the question asked in the problem let us see how to solve this problem let us read the problem first then we'll see how to solve this problem problem goes like this a rectangular channel 6 meter wide with a bed slope of 1 in 2000 carrying water at a rate of 8.5 meter cube per second with a depth of 90 cm under normal flow conditions if a dam is constructed across the channel the depth of flow increases by 1.3 meter find the depth of flow at 150 meter upstream of the dam change is constant c is equal to 60 so the normal depth of flow that is 0.9 meter at the dam or at the obstruction the depth of flow is 1.3 meters the question asked is at a distance of 150 meter on the upstream side of this obstruction what is the depth of flow change is constant is given okay so let us note down all the data given in the problem so it is a rectangular channel the width of the rectangular channel is 6 meters so normal depth is 0.9 meter that we call it as y1 and y2 is equal to 1.3 meters the bed slope of the channel is equal to 1 in 2000 and the discharge of the channel q is equal to 8.5 meter cube per second with this data let us start solving the problem since chase's constant is given in the problem let us use chase's formula so for finding this velocity at 1 1 the depth i mean the section where the depth of flow is equal to normal depth that is equal to 0.9 meter so chase's formula is given by v is equal to c into root of r into s now at section 1 1 this v1 is equal to c into r1 into s what is r1 r1 is the hydraulic mean radius or hydraulic mean depth at section 1 1 and that is given by so weighted area divided by weighted perimeter at section 1 1 that is given by a1 by p1 let us calculate a1 and p1 so a1 is equal to 6 meters width of the channel into the normal depth of flow that is 0.9 6 into 0.9 will gives me the value of weighted area a1 similarly p1 is equal to b plus 2y that is 6 plus 2 into 0.9 therefore r1 works out to be 0.69 meter knowing the value of r1 now substitute these values in the chase's formula therefore v1 is equal to so value of chase's constant c is equal to 60 therefore 60 into root of 0.692 into so the bed slope is 1 in 2000 given in the problem therefore 
find the value of v1. So v1 works out to be 1.12 meter per second. Okay. Now, whatever the depth of water or whatever the discharge flowing at section 1 1, the same discharge is flowing at section 2 2. I repeat, whatever the discharge flowing at section 1 1, the normal depth, the same amount of water is flowing at other obstruction. So, apply a continuity equation between section 1 1 and section 2 2. We have Q is equal to A1 V1 is equal to A2 V2. Consider this A1 V1 is equal to A2 V2. So, this is a rectangular channel. What is A1? A1 is equal to B into Y1. What is A2? A2 is equal to B into Y2. So, B, B, B and B gets cancelled. R. If you represent the width of the channel at section 1 1 as B1, at 2 2 it is B2. So, B1 is equal to B2. Okay. Therefore, the equation simplifies to so Y1 V1 is equal to Y2 V2. Therefore, the continuity equation can be written as Q is equal to Y1 V1 is equal to Y2 V2. Now consider this y1 v1 is equal to y2 v2. Now you know the value of y1 that is 0 0.9 given in the problem. You know the value of y2 that is equal to 1.3 given in the problem. Just now you calculated the value of v1 using the Chase's formula. The only unknown in this case is v2. Therefore v2 is equal to so y1 v1 divided by y2. So 0.9 into 1.12 whole thing divided by 1.3. Therefore, V2 works out to be 0 0.775 meter per second. So, you have Y1, V1, Y2, V2. Now, once you have these values, consider the GVF equation. What is this GVF equation? dy by dx is equal to S0 minus SF divided by 1 minus Q square T divided by GAQ. Now, kindly recall, while deriving this equation, we made an assumption. What is that assumption? The assumption we made was in order to find the slope of the total energy, we make use of the uniform flow formula such as Manning's formula or Chase's formula. So, in this case, since Chase's constant is given, in order to find the value of SF, we make use of this Chase's formula. So, Chase's formula V is equal to C into root of Rs. Now, in this case, so it is V2 is equal to C into, so I represent this S as SF, energy slope, raised to half into R2 raised to two-thirds. In this equation, the we need to calculate the value of R2. R2 is equal to hydraulic mean radius at suction 2 to R at the obstruction or at the dam. Okay, that is equal to A2 divided by P2. So, what is A2? The weighted area of the suction at su suction 2 to and P2 is the weighted perimeter at section 2 2. Now A2 is equal to B into Y2. So B is 6 meters into Y2 is 1.3 given in the problem divided by P2 is B plus 2 Y2. Therefore it is 6 plus 2 into 1.3 that is equal to 0 0.91 meter. So R2 is equal to 0 0.91 meter. So the unknown in the Chase's formula is SF. Therefore, SF is equal to V2 square divided by C square into R2. Okay. So, call this as, so keep this equation aside. Now, consider that GVF equation. Consider that part Q square T divided by GAQ. Now, in this case, Q is equal to A into V. So, in place of Q square, I am going to substitute A2 square into V2 square. 
and this since it is a rectangular channel top width is equal to bottom width so i am going to replace this capital t by the bottom width b and in the denominator it is g into so it is a cube therefore with reference to the section 22 I am going to split this a cube into a2 into a2 square. If you multiply this, you are going to get a2 cube. So if you simplify this, a2 square in the numerator and a2 square in the denominator gets cancelled. You are going to get v2 square into t divided by g a2. Ah, if I replace this t by by b, we are going to get v2 square b divided by g a2 so at this point in place of a2 i am going to introduce this b y2 so in the numerator numerator you have this v2 square uh, b and then in the denominator you have this g into b y2 so b b gets cancelled you are going to get v2 square divided by g y2 Okay, so what I am going to do is, so in that general JBF equation, so I am going to replace this q square t divided by g a cube by this v two square divided by g y two. Okay, now what is is s f s f is given by so v two square divided by c square into r two. Therefore, consider the GVF equation dy by dx that is equal to s naught minus. In place of s f, I am going to substitute this v two square divided by c square into r two. That is the numerator. Now come to the denominator. One minus v two square divided by g y two. Now start substituting the values. S naught is one over two thousand. That is given in the problem minus. Okay, so v uh, v two you already calculated. So v two works out to be zero point seven eight seven eight. Therefore, it is zero point seven eight square divided by the value of c given in the problem is sixty. Therefore, it is sixty square into r two is zero point nine one. Whole thing divided by one minus. So open the bracket. It is zero point seven eight square divided by so g is nine point eight one y two is one point three it is nine point eight one into one point one point three so if you simplify this you are going to get the value of t y by d x that is equal to three point three two two into ten power minus four now assuming that The depth of flow from section one one to section two two is uniform. Okay, now change of depth. So we are asked to find. We are asked to find what is the depth of flow at a distance of one fifty meter from the obstruction. So change of depth in one fifty meter from the of Obstruction that is equal to 150 into d y by d x. So it is 150 into 3.322 into 10 power minus 4. That simplifies to 0.0498 meter. Now, what is the depth of flow? What is the depth of flow at section one at at a section uh, at a distance of 150 from the upstream? That is equal to the depth of flow at the obstruction. That is 1.3 minus the change in depth at 150. That is 0.05. So 1.3 minus 0.05 that works out to be 1.25 meter. This is the depth of flow at a distance of 150 meter from the obstruction. Okay. i am trying to solve all types of problems one can expect from the gvf chapter so the last problem the problem goes like this 
a trapezoidal channel with 6 meter bottom and a side slope 2 horizontal to 1 vertical having a bed slope of 0 0.0016 carries a discharge of 10 meter cube of water. The dam along the way of the channel raises the water depth by 2 meter behind the dam. Decide the nature of the channel and the type of the profile of water. Take Manning's roughness coefficient n is equal to 0 0.025. If you recall the earlier problems what we solved, basically they are simple rectangular uh, channel problems. Solving those problems are quite easy compared to the other uh, type of channels like circular channel, uh, trapezoidal channel and a triangular section. So with that in mind, I consider this trapezoidal channel. Let us see how to solve this problem. Solution To decide the nature of the channel and the type of the water profile, we have to find Yn and Yc. Kindly go back to the theory. Okay. So what we did, we have the bed slope. Now we are finding the value of Yn. So write a line corresponding to that Yn that is your normal depth line. Find the value of Yc corresponding to this Yc, draw another line with reference to the channel bed. So that is your CDL. So depending on the bed slope, the CDL may be above NDL or it may be below NDL. So based on that, we classified the slopes, surface water slopes as mine slope, steep slope, critical slope, horizontal slope and adverse slope. And again, based on this, these three lines, bed slope, I mean bed line, then CDL and NDL, we have three zones, zone 1, zone 2, zone 3, depending on the depth of water in which zone the depth of water lies. This is what we studied in the theory. And we solved a similar type of problem, uh, similar to this at the beginning of uh, probably when I started solving the problems. Let us see how to solve this problem. Now, let us talk about this normal depth. So, first, this is a trapezoidal channel. We need to find the wetted area and wetted perimeter at section 11 and section 22. So, at section 11, the normal uh, wetted area is given by a1 is equal to b plus n y1 into y1. Okay, at section 11, we know that the flow is normal. Therefore, the equation becomes a1 is equal to b plus. So, n y n whole thing multiplied by y n. So, side slope of the channel is for every two horizontal, there is one vertical. Therefore, the value of n is equal to 2. So, in place of n, if we substitute the value of 2, then the equation takes up the form a is equal to b plus 2yn whole thing multiplied by yn. Similarly, the perimeter is given by p1 is equal to b plus 2y into root of n square plus 1. So, at section 1, 1, the equation P1 becomes B plus 2YN into, so N is 2 in this case, 2 squared plus 1, that becomes 5, that, that is root of 5. Okay, that's what I mentioned here. So, P is equal to B plus 2YN into uh, root of 5. Okay, now, knowing the value of weighted area and weighted perimeter, at section 1, 1, find the value of R. So, what is R? R is hydraulic mean radius that is given by A divided by P. So, A is R A1 by P1. So, that is equal to B plus 2YN whole thing multiplied by YN 
divided by b plus 2yn into root of 5. You know the value of uh, r. Now, consider the discharge equation q is equal to a into v. Now, I am going to make use of this Mannes formula in order to find the value of v. Why? Because Mannes roughness coefficient is given in the problem. Therefore, in place of v, if I write the Mannes formula, then q is equal to a divided by n into s raised to half into r raised to two thirds. Okay. Now, what is the value of q? q is equal to 10 given in the problem. Okay. Now, right now I am talking about these equations or these values with reference to section 1 1. Okay. Therefore, the value of weighted area is given by b plus 2yn whole thing multiplied by yn divided by Manning's roughness coefficient is 0 0.025. So, a by n is over into the value of s. So, s is 0 0.0016 raised to half. That is also given in the problem. Into r is b plus 2yn whole thing multiplied by yn divided by b plus 2yn into root of 5. This whole thing rise to 2 thirds. Now, if you look at this equation, okay, you know the value of b. b is 6 meters given in the problem. The only unknown is yn. So, solving for this yn by trial and error, okay, we get the value of yn is equal to 0 0.96 meter. So, you have the value of yn. The next step is you need to calculate the value of yc. How to find the value of yc? So, we proceed like this. So, this critical depth or the equation for this critical uh, critical condition is given by q square t divided by g a q is equal to 1. q square t divided by g a q is equal to 1. Ha. The other form of this equation is q squared divided by g is equal to a cube divided by t. So, q is 10 given in the problem. It is 10 squared divided by 9.81. That is equal to. So, right now I am talking about the critical depth. So, consider the equation for the weighted uh, area b plus 2y into y. In place of y, you substitute this y is equal to yc. Therefore, the equation takes up the form b plus 2yc whole thing multiplied by yc rise to 3 divided by top width for a rectangular channel that is given by b plus 2 into 2yc. Okay, So, if you simplify this, substituting the value of 6 in place of p, the equation you are going to get is 100 divided by 9.81 is equal to on the right hand side you have 6 plus 2 yc whole thing multiplied by yc rise to q divided by 6 plus 2 into 2 yc. Okay. Now, if you look at that equation, the only unknown is yc. Now, solving for this yc by trial and error, we are going to get the value of yc is equal to 0 0.61. So, yn you already calculated, yn works out to be 0 0.96 and just now you calculated the value of 0 point, uh, yc critical depth that is equal to 0 0.61. Now, draw a, draw a line, horizontal line, bed slope. Now, with reference to that, draw two lines one with respect to the normal depth that is equal to 0 0.96 with respect to the bed slope. The other is a critical depth that is equal to 0 0.61. Okay, please refer to this figure. I represented this normal depth as well as the critical depth. The line corresponding to this normal depth is normal depth line. The line corresponding to this critical depth is the critical depth line.
So this is zone 1, above this normal depth line, you have zone 1. Between this NDL and CDL, you have this zone 2 and below this CDL and above this bed slope, you have this zone 3. Now at this stage, kindly look at the characteristics of each and every slope. Okay. Now, if my NDL is more than CDL, then the slope is a mild slope. So, this is a mild slope channel or the surface profile is mild slope. The next question is in which zone this surface profile is. Okay. Now, what is the value of y? So, in this case, the value of y given is more than critical depth, more than so the normal depth. Okay. So, in other words, the given depth of flow is in zone 1. I repeat, so depending on the position of this, the value of CDL and NDL, I am going to classify this channel. So this is a mild slope channel because the critical depth line, critical depth is less than the normal depth. First part of the problem. Second part of the problem, in this case, the depth of flow is above the critical depth and above the normal depth. In other words, the depth of flow lies in zone 1. You have M1 curve, hard. It is in zone 1 and it is a mild slope. Therefore, the surface profile what you are seeing in this for this particular problem is M1 curve. Okay, so these are the different types of problems you can expect on this GVF topic.